Today we're going to have a look at the PeakDo wireless HDMI solution. Welcome back to Ben's Tech Lab. While I was getting ready for this video today, I was crawling around under the desk trying to get some wires ready and I managed to hit my head pretty good. That's always a nice way to start the day. Anyways, what we're doing today is taking a look at this product from PeakDo. This is a wireless video transmission system that uses the 60 gigahertz band, also known as millimeter wave. This is different from other products you might be used to seeing on the market, such as Miracast adapters, Google Chromecast, or Apple AirPlay, which all use the Wi-Fi frequencies, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. The Wi-Fi frequencies are shared between a lot of other devices and technologies around you, and there's only so much bandwidth to go around. So the video systems that use those frequencies are compressing the video. That means you'll see some reduction in video quality, and there's a bit of a latency added well, it does that compression and decompression on either end of the signal chain. This device, on the other hand, uses the 60 gigahertz band, which is a much higher frequency and allows for uncompressed video at zero latency. Let's take a look. Before we go any further, I wanted to mention that Peakdo is sponsoring this video with a giveaway. So if you'd like to win one of these, check the link in the description below for giveaway details. All right, so once we've got it all unboxed here, you can see the main components are on the top tray. This uh, little box here is the receiver unit. This unit is fairly simple. So on one end, we've just got a connection reset button and a status light, a little LED on there. And on the other side, we've got the HDMI output that goes to your TV or projector or monitor and a USB-C for power for this receiver device. On both edges, it's got these two little slots on it. Uh, which is for their mounting bracket. It comes with this little mounting bracket here, um, which has a couple of modes of use. It does have like a little spring-loaded clamp here that can clamp to the edge of something. Um, I did go around my house looking at all my monitors and TVs, and funny thing is none of them have square edges anymore. They have kind of like a beveled curved back to them. So this little clamp is really gonna be best if you're clamping onto something like a bookshelf or uh, the edge of a desk or something like that. But I think the best use of it is actually this big plate here to put some double-sided stick tape and you could stick it to the edge of your entertainment unit or something like that. So interesting uh, little mounting option there. Uh, but that's what those little, those little slots are for on the side of the receiver unit. Um, but probably the better option in my opinion is there's actually a magnet built in the back and it comes with these little uh, PeakDo logo stickers. These are uh, a thin metal and they actually just stick on there. So you could stick this to the wall um, wherever you might want to be using it. And it comes with a couple of them. So in case you move it around and then it just magnets to those uh, stuck on the wall wherever you want to uh, put it. All right, so next up, we've got the uh, transmitter itself. You'll notice that this little stick here is actually two pieces and it can pull apart. This is the main transmitter, which has an HDMI input on it. And it has also a small button on the end um, for connection reset, similar to the receiver. And it does have optional USB power. You don't need USB power all the time, but particularly on older devices, their ports might not supply enough power, in which case you need to kind of uh, help it out by plugging in a USB cable as well to give it a little bit boost on the on the power input there. Uh, the second half of this uh, receiver or transmitter unit here is a USB-C to HDMI dongle. That allows you to use this on computers that don't have an HDMI port, especially things like the newer MacBooks uh, that just have USB-C on them. And last but not least, there is this little USB-C extension cable in the top tray here. It's a flexible cable, and this is used for your mobile device, like an, uh, a phone or a tablet. So you can plug this little USB-C on the bottom of your phone, and then the wireless transmitter into that. And then you could now hold the uh, transmitter on the back of your phone while you're doing something and the transmitter is kind of out of the way and not sticking out the end of your phone. All right, a couple more things that come in the box. We've got a regular HDMI uh, cable to attach the receiver to your TV. You've got a little power brick for powering up the receiver. You've got a USB-A to USB-C uh, cable for the power brick to go to the receiver. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to mention, uh, you get a lot of benefits with 60 gigahertz being zero latency and uncompressed, but the one downside is it really wants to be line of sight. That means the transmitter and the receiver, if you were to stretch a string between the two of them, if you could make that string touch both ends without going through anything, then the signal's gonna work great. If you can't, because there's something in the way, you may see signal dropouts. 
So I've uh, rigged up a little metal plate here just for my uh, YouTube demo that's just used so that I can uh, magnet this on there and put it on a tripod or a camera mount anywhere I want so that we can test this thing out. Um, but again, if you were in a permanent install, you can use these little sticker metal things and stick it to your wall or your entertainment cabinet or whatever. Okay, so we're all hooked up with the MacBook Pro 2013 edition here. This one, uh, this 2013 laptop did have an HDMI port on it, so we're directly attached to there. But because it's a little bit older, there isn't quite enough power on that HDMI port to power this alone. So I do have the USB-C uh, wire plugged in here for a little bit of extra power coming from the uh, USB port on the side of the computer. You could see that I have the receiver uh, up here above my monitor so that it is line of sight. That means from this, uh, Receiver box to this transmitter is a perfectly open airspace, which gives you a really good signal. To test this out here, I've just got my website open with one of my own YouTube videos. I don't want to play somebody else's because I'll be demonetized, but uh, let's see how this looks here. So playing a uh, YouTube video onto the monitor wirelessly, you can see the frame rate is really great. There's no dropping frames. There's no uh, artifacts from compression or something like that. It's really smooth and exactly what you'd expect. All right, let's do a quick test. While this video is playing, I'm gonna hold up some things in between the line of sight of this receiver and the transmitter and see if we can get the signal to drop. So starter, I've got a little uh, toolkit here. So if I put this up on here, ah, not bad, it's still playing. So that's just a tiny bit of metal in there, not a lot of metal. So it's not gonna be like the worst thing for interfering with wireless. Let's try an iPad here. Let's see if we can get that to... Eh, iPad doesn't drop the signal either, but uh, let's try something else. Let's see here, let's do a water bottle. This is a metal water bottle and it's full of water. So this should probably drop the signal out. Yep, there you go. So holding up a metal water bottle uh, with water in it, you can see there are frames being dropped. It's not smooth anymore. So um, that just gives you a point that these devices really wanna be line of sight. And if you have something in between them, uh, you can get dropped frames because of that. So you really wanna set it up so that the receiver is kinda up on the wall somewhere or next to the TV. So it's got really good kind of viewpoint of whatever you're using to, uh, to transmit. All right, so next up on the test, I have my wife's uh, 2020 M1 MacBook Air, and we're gonna try this one out. It has no HDMI port, so the newer Macs uh, just have USB-C. So let's go ahead and uh, put the little USB-C dongle back on here with the HDMI together and plug that one in. So I've loaded up my website again here, and we're gonna uh, load a YouTube video, make that thing full screen, and it's looking great. Uh, just as before, it's super smooth. There's no drop frames. There's no additional compression beyond what YouTube would already be doing on this video. And uh, it's definitely an excellent uh, solution for these little MacBooks that have no HDMI port and need a USB-C option. All right, so let's try something a little more fun. In one of my recent videos, I built this Nintendo emulator with my son, Luke. That was a pretty fun project. You can check it out if you like. Um, this is built on a Raspberry Pi 4. So I've got the Peakdo wireless video transmitter plugged into an adapter to go from full size HDMI to micro HDMI on this Raspberry Pi. So let's power it up and see how this thing does with the uh, wireless video. All right, so when I built this RetroPie with my son, uh, I initially plugged it into the TV with this long HDMI cord. This is, uh, I think, 15 feet long, and it goes from full-size HDMI to micro HDMI for the Raspberry Pi, but it's not a super thick gauge wire, so uh, for whatever reason, between this being a thinner cable and this being a Raspberry Pi, which isn't that uh, powerful of a machine, it was not driving the TV well. It was either dropping frames or maybe the frame rate itself was dropping, I'm not sure. But when you are playing a game where you really want to time like a jump or a move to something that's going on in the game, if it's off by one or two frames, it can really mess you up. All right, let's try this thing out. It's definitely responsive.
Yep, I'd say it's working. So uh, hey, if the jumps and moves and everything are just feeling smooth as butter, then this Peak Dew is really living up to its name as being a zero latency device. I really like that. And if you're looking for a mobile gaming setup where you might want to bring this to a friend's house and you're not sure if you're going to have the right wire lengths to go from the plug-in to the TV or wherever you got going, uh, this thing uh, seems to be like a good solution for that. Okay, a couple more cool things left. So we got an iPad here. Um, obviously iPads don't have HDMI outputs on them. Uh, you may be able to go and get the official Apple uh, iPad to HDMI dongle. And if you have one of those, that's great. But Peak Do also makes a lightning adapter here. So let's check this guy out. So there is a, um, similar to the USB adapter, it's got lightning on one side and HDMI on the other side. Um, and you can plug them together like so does come with another one of these little short extension wires so that um, if you want to plug it onto your device and then put this on the back, you can do that. So uh, with the lightning adapter on this iPad, which is kind of like a mid-tier entry-level iPad, um, it is not powered from the lightning port. So we're going to need a little bit of a, a auxiliary USB-C power here. So we'll get our, um, ah, there we go. So uh, on the iPad, it didn't pick it up right away. I had to click the connection reset button. I'm not sure if that's because I added the lightning uh, adapter, but it's super simple. There's a button on both devices that just says connection reset and they repair uh, when you click that. All right, so I've pulled up one of my videos on YouTube to check the latency here. We're playing from the iPad with the lightning adapter. Let's see how this thing looks. All right, well, overall, this is working pretty good. Videos playing from the iPad over the PeakD wireless to the display, it looks good. Um, it's a little interesting to me that it wouldn't power off of its port itself, but this is like an entry model iPad. Um, I assume that like an iPad Pro or one of their nicer phones would probably power it uh, by itself. So, um, but uh, yeah, so I had to add a little extra power for this here. All right, so here's a little geekier one for my YouTuber friends who are into video tech. I record all my YouTube videos on a product from Blackmagic called an ATEM Mini. I have this PeakDo wireless transmitter attached to the multi-view output of my ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, and it is transmitting wonderfully to this display with no auxiliary power or anything extra added like that. This would be great for doing something like a mobile monitor in a video studio and is uh, zero latency, so you should be able to do something like focus pulling a little bit better than if you're using something like a Hollyland Mars uh, video transmission system. Uh, this is really cool. The one thing that did not work is using the Peak Do as an input on here for a wireless camera. And I suspect that that's actually a problem with the Blackmagic firmware, not a problem with this Peak Do product. Blackmagic has in the past had to release firmware updates for new monitors year over year. And so I suspect that this device is just a little too new and they'll need to do a little firmware update to make that work as an input on these camera switchers. This model that I'm testing today is a 1080p 60 frame per second model and it seems to have tested really well. It just worked when I plugged it into various devices. You don't have to install any apps or drivers or configuration. The one time I did not get a connection right away, I just pressed the little connection reset buttons on the uh, dongle there and it connected up after a few seconds. Uh, overall, really happy with that user experience. The fact that it uses the 60 gigahertz millimeter wave band and not the Wi-Fi frequencies of 2.4 or five gigahertz is a big plus because you're not gonna run into the interference that you might run into when you've got a crowded Wi-Fi spectrum depending on where you are. The zero latency tested really well. Uh, when I was watching a video, it looks really smooth. There's no drop frames or uh, artifacts from compression and testing with the video game console was really smooth as well. The controls really lined up with the frames just right. It didn't feel awkward is exactly what I was expecting from a zero latency solution. Don't forget, if you'd like to win one of these, there's gonna be giveaway details in the description of this video below, and that'll probably run for about 30 days after this video is published. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, then leave it a like down below. It helps me out quite a lot. And while you're down there, consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.